Welcome to Rambam in Depth. Today we'll be discussing the Rambam Hilfus Kiddush HaChadish, Perik Yitzayin, Halacha Chav Dalid, the very last Halacha of Perik Yitzayin. After the Rambam goes through all the different calculations about determining when the new month is, the Rambam says, V'tam kol ewa cheshbeinus, umepe ma mesif em minyan zeh, umepe ma geirin, echneida kol dovim, vedovim, ebo hadvarim. All of these calculations all that we add on, that we subtract, and how we know all these matters, and the proofs, the astronomical proofs for all these matters, these are all part of the subjects of astronomy and geometry. Now, where's the source of all these things? The Greek sages composed many books on this, and these are the books that the scholars today possess. So, in other words, the Rambam is saying that all this knowledge that he has produced here in the Hilchas Kiddush HaChadish were based on these Greek works of astronomy and geometry. Avol, that he says, However, However, the Svarim, the books that were composed by the Jewish sages that existed in the times of the prophets never reached us. And since everything we mention here is impeccable knowledge, you can't really cast aspersions on them. We're not concerned about who the author is of these teachings of astronomy and geometry, whether they were composed by the prophets or well, they were composed by the nations of the world. And why? In other words, as long as you can show, dem- demonstrate scientifically, logically, that these calculations are true, we rely on it, regardless of its source. So what the Rambam here is saying, and the question is, why does he have to point this out that the Jewish sages composed books of astronomy, but we don't have them, so we have to rely on the books of the Greek astronomers and mathematicians, and it's legitimate to do that. What is the Rambam trying to tell us over here? So the Rebbe explains that the Rambam, on one hand, is telling us that these calculations are based on Greek works, but they've been incorporated into Torah. So when a person studies the Rambam, although the information is based on Greek books of astronomy, it's considered an integral part of Torah. One has to make a bracha, a birchas Torah. One cannot learn Torah without the birchas Torah. What about learning astronomy? You don't have to make birchas Torah when you study astronomy from secular textbooks, but because this has been incorporated in Torah, it becomes an integral part of Torah, and you have to make Birchas HaTorah. And the Rebbe then explains that there's a certain advantage to this process, because it, King Solomon, Shleim HaMelech says, I saw there's an advantage to foolishness, to wisdom out of foolishness, just like there's an advantage to light out of darkness. And of course, you don't have to be King Solomon to recognize that light is better than darkness and that wisdom is better than foolishness. So the Rebbe explains that means that when you take something that relative to Torah is considered foolishness, all the brilliant teachings of science relative compared to the teachings of Torah are all considered to be sikhlus, foolishness. So when you take the foolishness and you use it for the purpose of Torah, for the purpose of knowing when to declare Rosh Chodesh, which is all part of Torah, there's an advantage over there because you're elevating the foolishness into wisdom. But nevertheless, you have to realize that that's only because we don't have the original texts that were composed in the days or even by the Nevi'im. We don't have those texts. What does that tell us? What's the halacha over here? The halacha over here is that in the days of Mashiach, and the Rambam incorporates things that are needed for the days of Mashiach, which other great poskim omitted, but the Rambam does talk about the days of Mashiach and the halachas that will be relevant then, when Mashiach will come and will go back to the status of the d- period of the Nevi'im and beyond, we won't need to use the books that come from Sichlus, they come from the secular sources. We'll go back to the 
study of these teachings as they are contained within the works of Torah themselves. So this could explain why the Rama has to mention this when his sources are secular sources. So why is he telling us that the Nevi'im composed those books? We don't have access to them because one day will come that we will have access to them and we will go by those books based on Torah itself without having to resort to the works of the Chachmi Umm